Well, the last part of the last piece of video I showed didn't really show much, so I'm going to show you here. I'm going to show you the curve using the sun to help show you the curve as I turn the blade. Very good there. Now I have sharpened the back side of this. I'm going to back up so I can see my screen. There we go. As you can see the curve, the sharpened edge here, and then how it gets up into here. Now from here, is a sh it's sharpened up on this edge. This side here is the side that I sharpened it off. You can see how it tapers out this way. This is the flat side of the blade. This is the trailing edge and the leading edge down here where my fingers are. Uh, I'll give you the view down the board. I can get orientated here so now you can see exactly what's going on on it okay I'm Scott Brown Green Wind and other home energies okay just a little short demonstration if you could see light underneath the teeth of this blade with the light source on the other side that might help you can see that it's not exactly flat there it's just a good way of measuring to tell how much of a curve you still have left in the middle and how far you have to take it down okay when we left off I just got done doing this little part right here and had all that left to do but instead I went to the other side just in case and to show you just how thin this board is even up at the root and all the way down there you are now from this angle using the sunlight I get to show you the the curve the nice tapered curve that it has and I'll turn it around here we'll get a nice view of the Venturi curve there we go put a little shadow on it might show up and a little less that's the way the end of the blade looks and you can definitely tell looking down it the twist all the way down the root right there where you see it the flattest center of your screen is responsible for startup and then this is where your power comes from even though this is only three degrees it slices the wind many times people think you need more blades you really don't more blades means more drag. The faster props have less, less blades on them. The more blades you got, the slower that prop's going to go. And the more of an angle you have to put on the end. Anyway, I'm going to get over to this part here. I might even show you a little video of it. I have to check my memory level and download what I have on the camera at the moment. You see, this is still pretty thick right there. Oh, get it back in there see this is still pretty thick right there and when I'm done it'll look like that but it'll be twisted all the way out to the end this prop is so light I wish you could feel it okay I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energies anyway in case you don't have a sawzall or a hacksaw as long as you have a rasp it's a good thing you can go with the rounded side till both edges meet. It's just as fast as the hacksaw. And pretty accurate. You can see what you're doing. You move along pretty fast. Here's a new cut. Almost there. A few more lifts. And you, this is the way I actually did the other side. Took me about 20, 30 minutes. Except I cursed the other side, but I used the rest for all the clean out. Then when you get into in between them, look at that. Use the flat side.
Now I've got my perfect carve out from this line, from this line to this line, all the way from here to here. It doesn't really take that long. And then like before I added that I did over there, uh, I draw a one third in, one third in, and I take from here to here, and from here to, from there, uh, from that one third line up to here, I mean up to here, and then I come back and burn it with the, with the grinder, and that takes care of that. I'll do just a little more for you. Thread. You don't need to be rich. You don't have to have all that much tools. Just knowing how to use them makes a lot of difference. Look how fast that disappeared. I just did an inch in under a whole minute. Maybe under a minute. Scott Brown, Green Wind, and other home energies. Yeah, one more thing. Notice I'm not going this way and pulling a whole bunch of big chips off, off the end of my blade. Going this way makes a difference. Especially when you get down to the thinner pieces of wood. Just before you get to your cuts, check and adjust your angle so that this gouge meets both lines. It's a pretty fast and accurate way to do it. Dragging back like you see me doing is not preferred. But I don't care until I get down to my last strokes. I'll drag it real light. Anyway, I'm going to speed back up here. Hope I'm still in the view. This, what I'm taking off, is getting much thinner here. The very end. Do at an angle going out. From the leading edge. There we go. And I should finish the rest of this in a couple of minutes, but I'm not going to waste the camera. And your final strokes. will still go this way, but this way too. That allows the flat of the file to even it all out nice and even for you. Still works wonderful. Yeah. And I'm done on that. Now I'll draw my lines and do the next sections. Okay, I want to start at my end. On these strokes, you want to take them along with the blade a little bit down as you go sideways. This keeps everything pretty much consistent. If you lean over the blade like this, you can see the other side and keep it against you. This makes things go pretty quick. More down like this to speed up, more like this to keep it nice and even and keep the edge from splintering. When I get re right now, I'm that close to the edge. When I get down to the very edge, I, I want to make sure I'm going like this with just a little bit of downward motion this way. And check my angle each time I go another inch. Get the top part of it off as you go like this, and then work on the little section that you're at last. Going like this, take the most off, and you can go right down this blade pretty quick. 